Italy grass semifinal, the winner of this matchup between Sarah Irani and Bernarda Pera will take on Alicia Parks, who's patiently waiting, probably relaxing in her hotel room. Or then again, she may be even watching this match. Now, if you didn't watch this match, don't worry. I got you covered. Do me a favor, like the video, hit the super thanks, and go back and like all 6,000 of my videos. But Sarah Irani would snap, ladies and gentlemen. I should play the video, but... The language, she was very upset at a call that should have went her way. And the crowd started to back her. And this thing could have got pretty ugly here for this chair of fire. The crowd was not having it. They're in Italy. And Sarah, she went on for about 10 minutes. But luckily, she would end up winning that service game. I don't know if Bernardo Pera felt sorry for her or something. But she would end up going. She she went up to love in the third and final set. But Bernardo Pera, I told you she'd win the match. It's a little too much. She's going to take on Alicia Parks in the championship match. That's going to be great now for Alicia Parks fans. Of course, I just feel I think Sarah Irani is a great player. But it would have been a much easier match for Alicia Parks. I don't think Irani could could have dealt with the power of Alicia Parks. But the question is, can Bernarda Pera deal with it? She had 16 aces today, guys. An amazing performance. She won 70% of her first serves and 7 for 12 on breakpoint opportunities. The crafty lefty, two Americans. Stay tuned tomorrow. Get your popcorn. I'll be covering that. Yes, yeah, uh, Ronnie lost her cool, but nonetheless, uh, hey, great player, great warrior. Congratulations for an amazing effort. What about Ashlyn Kruger, guys, the American? Now, the expert said that Silva would not win more than five service games. Well, she did that alone in the second set, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you tell me Ashlyn Kruger would have a match with zero aces and win, I'd say probably not going to happen, but she was 6 for 14 on breakpoint opportunities. She won 62% of her first serves. Now, that was about 80% for most of the match. She had the opportunity. She had two match points. She could have wrapped this second set up 6-2, but she just could not quite do it. That's okay, guys. She wins. She's going to take on the wild card. That's right, McDonald next up. What about big game Sophia Kennan? Listen, I don't care if you call her Sonia or Sophia. Just don't leave out the big game. Taking on Dasha Seville. Ooh, Seville had the opportunity to go up 5-4, but big game Sophia Kennan turned on the Rockets, the Burners, and she would win this match in straight sets. What's next for Sophia Kennan? Well, Victoria Golovic, who took out Carolyn Dolhide, who seems to be struggling right now. That's right, Silva, who just lost to Kruger. She actually went three sets with Dolhide recently. But Kennan's going to take on Victoria Golovic. That's going to be fun. What about Camilla Osorio, one of the toughest players I've ever seen in my life, ladies and gentlemen? That's right, Eastburn qualifiers. All of these matches, big time. Now, Magdalena Fresh. She had the opportunity to serve this match out. That's right, guys. She broke 5-4, had the opportunity to serve it out. She had a match point, but Camilla Osorio does not stop fighting. She would break back, hold, and break Magdalena to win this match as the 2-1 to one underdog. That was my pick, by the way. Now, yes, we're perfect on free predictions today. I do that for free. I don't ask anything for you. Just like the video. If you want to hit the super thanks, you can do that as well. But that's all free, guys. Camilla wins. She's going to take on either Lin Zhu or Uchima. No, scratch out Lin Zhu. She can't play. Greet Menon, ladies and gentlemen. Took her spot. So, Osorio, looks like Greet Menon is up in the second set with an opportunity to serve it out. I think she'll be taking on Camilla Osorio next. That's right. Camilla Osorio comes through. Amazing match. What about little Lauren Davis, ladies and gentlemen, from the USA, taking on Laura Sigmund. Now, this was a match here where Laura was the favorite. I mean, I don't know why, because Lauren Davis, as long as she's healthy... She's just too darn tough, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. She would win 66% of her first serves. She would win about 50% of Laura Sigmund's first and second serves. Five for seven on breakpoint opportunities. Lauren Davis gets the job done. She advances. What's next for Davis? She's going to take on Angelina. Kalinina. That's going to be a good match, guys. Now, Greek men, and here we go. Taking on Utima. Linzu had to X her out of that. Now, in terms of Greek men, and she's playing solid right here, guys. The winner of this match is going to take on Camilla Osorio. It looks like Greek men is going to win this match. I mean, I don't, unless something drastic happens here. I think she should be a lot to win here. Now, Petra Martic, she's going to take on Elena Evanesian. Kruger's going to take on the wild card McDonald. Some good matches in Eastburn. This is qualifiers. 
Two championships tomorrow. It looks like Pagula in golf. They are in the second set tiebreak. Right now, Pagula's up 3-1. Coco is serving. Coco is down a mini break, so she needs to hold on her second serve, and she also needs to get the mini break back to get back level on serve. It's a huge mountain to climb, but we saw Coco save three set points earlier to on, so it's definitely possible if she gets the rest. She looked a little bit sluggish to me. It looked like, I mean, watching Coco play all the time, there was a level there that she just didn't have today, and a lot of subscribers are saying there's no way you know, these professionals should have to play two matches in a day. So what's the alternative, guys? Because, you know, the next tournament starts, they're booked. A lot of these stars are booked for that tournament. I mean, should those following, because you have ticket sales, you have different things, you have press obligations. There's a lot of things set up with sponsors, endorsements. There's a lot of business dealings that are set up with these tournaments. I don't know if you can really do that with the schedule. You have flights, book, hotel reservations. There's a lot involved. I don't know, guys. I think the only option is to rush these matches and play several two matches in the same day. I mean, when the rain happens, it's tough. Or do you think there should be some type of... Uh, I mean, I think it takes away from the integrity of the tournament, right? If there's a grass outdoor tournament, hard outdoor tournament, you can't really move it indoors. Now, we saw... In Auckland last year, they just had to do it. The rain was so bad, and Venus ended up getting hurt. So that's another thing you have to consider. Switching from surface to surface, that can cause injury. So I don't know. I don't really have the answer. I just I just think that you have to hope for the best in terms of the weather and just cross your fingers and play these matches I think you have to rush them on the same day and, and just double up. As bad as, as bad as it sounds, I don't think there's any alternative. What do you guys think? I don't know. But I also want to really talk about how um, I think the morale of the tour is, is starting to drop. Just to see so many players not even want to play in France, it's tough. Now, of course... I mean, is it Iga? Is it is it really the schedule? Is it switching from surface to surface? There's a lot of issues, and I think it's a combination of all of them. But just seeing how many players withdrew, like Elena was sick this week, had to withdraw. Sabalenka, she hasn't been feeling well the last couple tournaments. I don't know. I mean, Emma says no to the Olympics. Ans. Tiafo says no to the Olympics. I mean, he did have an injury, but Shelton says no. Corda, Madison Keys says no. It's like you guys ever run a business, and you know I've I've run several businesses with tons of employees. You ever run a business, and it just seems like the employee morale is just down, and it's, you just have to do something to fix it. I think the players' association these these are the type of issues the players' association, their ons and everyone on board. They're gonna have to get together and, and discuss what's going on. I think one thing that can help, especially the players that are struggling, I've mentioned this before, a mandate, the WTA has to put $10 million aside each year, make the Saudis pay it. Whoever wants to host the finals, add on $10 million. Anyone ranked one inside the top 100, all 100 players, a $100,000 bonus at the end of the year. Of course, the top tier players won't need that money, but hey, it could be a bonus for their coaching staff, for their for their team, you know, for their assistants. This will help the players towards the bottom end of the rankings sustain living, you know, pay for coaches. Sometimes you have these players traveling abroad with no coach, you know, they're sharing 3 to 4 players per hotel room, you know, and and Yes, they're fed well at the tournament venue, but outside the tournament, you're in your room. There's a lot going on, and these expenses, they they cost a lot to to be healthy and get the nutrients and hydration and the food to s sustain and recover. I think a one hundred thousand dollar bonus for all players, ranked from one to one hundred at the end of the year, it's a ten million dollar write off. Find a way to pay these players, right? It's going to help, and I think it's going to increase. The quality of level for these players right and i think it gives them less things to worry about sometimes when you're stressed and you're worried about money and winning a match so bad you don't play your best you know if you can play carefree i think the level's going to improve a bit
That's just my thoughts there. But nonetheless, Eastburn coming up, guys. We have some great matches to be played. A couple championships tomorrow. I'm going to post in the community. Who do you think is going to win, Para or Alicia Parks? Can Coco come back? Will Anna Kylinskaya win? I do think if if Pegula gets past Coco, she just needs four more points. Uh, I think she beats Anna Kylinskaya. I do think so. But nonetheless, the match has to be played.